you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension of not only a film and sound, but mind. A journey into an auditory movie review adventure that must be experienced to be believed. There's a signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Doomsday Clock. Week 87, 2 hours 30 minutes to doomsday. Okay, Babs, so you know what? You know what other people do on their on, on summer holidays? Well, what's something that we, we could watch a movie about? Based on my previous research, there are a number of videos in the archives that depict human family units taking extended vehicle-based journeys for enjoyment. I do not fully understand the concept of forcing yourself into a meat locker on wheels for enjoyment but, then the more time I spend with you, the more I realize that you sentient sacks of water and goo are idiotic creatures. Okay, let's watch a road trip movie. The Hills Have Eyes, 1977. A family going to California accidentally goes through an air testing range close to the public. They crash and are stranded in a desert. They are being stalked by a group of people which have not emerged into modern times. They wanted to see something different, but something different saw them first. The hills have eyes. Mister, don't take your family back in that area. The silver has been gone for 40 years now. Besides, there's nothing back in there but animals. A lot. The old creep told you not to get off the road. <laughs> What began as a vacation ended as a nightmare. Be hell to pay now. How was that? She thought she knew what the world was all about, but nothing prepared her for this. The hills have eyes. Oh, you go with my baby. Yeah, that way, dear. <laughs> A mother fighting for her child loses it in the worst possible way. I hit him with a tire iron and I split his face wide open. That was a bad mistake. <laughs> I come back for you later, girly. Why are you doing this? The story of an American family who lost everything except the will to survive. Murdered, raped, burned, but not beaten. The hills have eyes. The story of one family's refusal to die. I'm gonna get those animals. The hills have eyes. A night of terror. A day of vengeance where no one was spared. No one. Kill the babe! Kill me! They fought back. Anything was a weapon. A family dog to the family car. It's working! The Hills Have Eyes. The most shocking, terrifying film you will ever see by Wes Craven, writer and director of The Last House on the Left. The hills have eyes. The lucky ones died first. Oh, cool! It's Darren Wilson! Mate, how are ya? I'm doing pretty fucking good, man. How are you? It's been a minute. Um, 
It look it has has been a minute, and weirdly enough, last time you were here, you were frozen, and this time it's summer, ah. so it's warm, man. You you can relax, you can put your feet out, you can put on your flip flops if that's something you're wearing. Ah. Do you call them flip flops? Uh, flip flops, or or uh, some people call them sandals, but I don't know if they're sandals if they don't go between your big toe. I'm not sure. I really only wear them like if I'm taking a shower in a strange place. Yes. Uh, do, you, do you often take showers in strange places? No, or is not, that a question? <laughs> that a question not, not not to be answered. Not well, yeah, not so much anymore. But it, it was a wilder time in my twenties. Sure, the roaring sure. And, and, and quite often, then it was just have a shower in what you were wearing because it was easier. Yes, yes. Got to wash everything at once. Um, and and for the record, we call them thongs, and our New Zealand cousins call them jandals. Jandals. Uh, I've never Never heard that Jandals. one. You'll, you'll get yeah. the occasional thongs here, but after Cisco did all of that chaos on MTV, I think somebody thinks of something else first when you say thongs. Yes, which is true enough. True enough. So speaking of madness uh, and things that go bump in the night, we are watching... 1977's The Hills Have Eyes. With a runtime of one hour and 30 minutes, um, this was directed by the man, the myth, the legend, Wes Craven. Best known for being a prolific horror writer and director of classics such as A Nightmare on Elm Street, The People Under the Stairs, and The Scream series. Is uh, What's your favourite Wes Craven, mate? You know, a lot of the time, it's this. This? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was not my first Wes Craven. And when I was 16, I probably would have said Last House on the Left. Oh. Um, I, it, it, oh. When I first... That movie, will, that movie will fuck up your shit. It, it, will it, it totally shit. will. And I, yeah, I went, uh, let's see, head first into Wes Craven when I was young, budding, horror-specific fan. I, I mean, I always liked movies and everything, but, you know, when you're in junior high or whatever... Uh, you know, twelve, thirteen. You start watching horror movies yeah. if, if you haven't already, you know, started. And then I found out that Wes Craven grew up about an hour and a half away from where I was. Uh-huh. I, I was like, "Oh, fuck yeah, this guy!" And you'd already heard about Freddy Krueger from from your friends who got to see horror movies when you were much younger. But I mean, I think Nightmare on Elm Street came out when I was two or three. So, wow. uh, because that was that was eighty four, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 It's a bit right. So you know, of course, you watch Nightmare on Elm Street, and then you go into his back catalog. Some of his later stuff, I can easily say I don't like Vampire in Brooklyn. The, let's be honest. No one likes Vampire in Brooklyn. I, I, I don't even it's, think he liked Vampire in Brooklyn. I know he no. and Eddie Murphy each thought they were making a different kind of movie. And yep, and I'm pretty sure that the studio thought they were making a different movie as well, yeah. and just went, you know what, we'll release it anyway. Someone will watch it. Yeah, and, and it's kind of a bummer because I think Eddie Murphy wanted to make more of a horror movie because one of the things Wes Craven said, and either one of the books I read or one of the times I saw him talk, he said the first thing that Eddie Murphy said to him when they met was a quote. From from the hills have eyes, which is later on oh, wow. when, when Mars is like, "Baby's fat, you <laughs> fat and juicy, you fat and juicy." Yeah, that's the first thing Eddie Murphy ever said to Wes Craven. Wow. But let's remember that Eddie Murphy also wanted to make albums of love songs. Uh, that's true. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just, on that note, I think we should just step away and talk about <laughs> uh, another icon, which is a, the, I consider the star of this movie, which is of course Michael Berryman as Pluto, best known for being that guy with the weird head in all those horror movies and appearing as the principal with a ventriloquist dummy in Motley Crue's "Smoking in the Boys Room." <laughs> and Weird Science as his character yes. in another movie. <laughs> yes. Michael Berryman is absolutely iconic. You you just got to go, no, it's that dude with the weird head and everyone knows who he is. Yep. And you know, he had to get cold in those night shoots out there in the desert having no hair on his body, basically. Yeah. And wearing what looked like a a raccoon tie uh, (laughs) and and nothing else. That was just weird. Yeah. I mean, like... you. You get cold in the fucking desert, and I'm just like, no. Yeah, and, and you know what? His his little little sister Ruby's wearing the Barbarilla outfit. Yep, and <laughs> he. Yeah, but fuck yeah, Michael Berryman and 
uh, he's one of the names that stands out. I know the guy that plays Grandpa was in a bunch of westerns that I might. John have seen. Stedman. John so Stedman. John Stedman played Fred. Um, he he's probably best known for being that crazy old guy because uh, he did a lot of that. He was actually in Gator and White Lightning which uh, I did on this show in the very, very early numbers with our good friend, Court Psyop. That may have um, been the first was- episode I listened to. There you go. See, he was actually in Gator. But, I mean, John Stedman has been that crazy old, just <laughs> old guy for, like, forever. Probably thro- Westerns- has thrown his hat and stomped on it at least once. Oh, yes, and probably yelled at a mule, I reckon. Uh, There's has a good he, chance that he's he yelled at a mule. Has he found a gold mine, perhaps? <laughs> potentially <laughs> but he definitely didn't find the silver mine or whatever the fuck that the uh oh, the, yes, the poor those, family was those dumb dumb fucking people yeah. and speaking of that family the only person of any real note in that family is of course d wallace as lynn wood best known for being a tv and horror staple with roles in cujo critters the howling the frighteners and so many more movies yeah. She's like the, the quintessential, like, 70s and 80s mom. And I, wasn't she the mom-like realtor in House of the Devil? Oh, she may well have been, actually. But- I, said, I, I looked at her IMDb and went, fuck, that's a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she was in The Stepford Wives... Oh, I, think, I love that movie. I, I love that movie. It's oh, fucking awesome. So good. I, I even like the remake, to tell you the truth. With, um, oh, what's her name? The Australian woman. And I can't think what oh, her name is. Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. And Christopher yes. Walken and uh, <sighs> yeah. Matthew. I totally ran over people in Ireland. Broderick. And, <laughs> Awkward. Uh, <laughs> Glenn Close. Talking about yeah. horror movie. Well, I don't know. Fatal Attraction is in the horror genre for me yeah, well it's thriller. a horror yeah. thriller i mean look if you've ever had a girlfriend like that it's a horror movie let's be honest <laughs> but yeah d wallace uh, recently i saw that she was in rockadoodle which i don't yes I, yeah <laughs> yes I, I, weirdly enough I, when i was looking at imdb i went she was in rockadoodle and i went i don't even know what that is but oh. i want to <laughs> it is actually pretty cool i think do you like animated films Oh, hell yeah. Okay, so there is a rooster that is kind of like Elvis. Right. And uh, what else do I remember? There's there's a really cool song that the owls sing called We Hate the Sun. And <laughs> it's one of those old... Uh, fuck, when did that come out? That was early 90s, late 80s. So okay. that kind of animated kid show... Some I think somebody's got to save the farm. There's maybe a flood, but yeah, Rockadoodle is this famous rooster that's kind of like Elvis. And then there's songs. And there you go, kids. Go and see a rock and doodle. So, like, probably the first, first impressions really count. Is, is that uh, Grandpa Fred's a day drinker. And it was just like, yeah, that's setting the tone for everything that's going to happen in this movie. Yep. His nose is swelling beyond proportion. Hmm. Uh, yep. Uh, he, he, he's, he, he's saving his pig, which is important. <laughs> you got to save your pig. Yeah. Got to save the pig. It'll make you some, some money at the fair, perhaps, or you get well, or keep you warm at night, depending on what you're doing. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't. It gets he. Uh, they talk about it being lonely out there. Well, uh, that's exactly it. And look, I am not the one to kink shame. Um. Now, speaking of people that should be ashamed, the family in this movie should be ashamed because they cannot, for the fucking life of them, read a map. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, this blue line right here. No, it's <laughs> no, it's a dotted line. <laughs> if it's on it's there just, at all, uh... yeah. I, I, I'm just saying, God, like it, it was like like one of those cartoons where they start unfolding the map and it just gets like bigger than the actual vehicle <laughs> and everyone's trapped inside it. I just go, oh, you people, for, for you kids at home. Once upon a time, we didn't have GPSs. We had to rely on paper. Yeah. If it wasn't Papers a giant what goes in books, paper. kids. It's printed yeah, out. It's a giant, specifically folded paper. Yeah. 
with just lines and dots and shit all over it, and you had to understand what it all meant. And I'm pretty sure that the people in this movie had no fucking idea. Because no one, no one on their right fucking mind goes, you know what, I'm just going to take a detour to look for a pretend silver mine in the middle of a military, um, what was it, firing range and X, uh, nuclear testing zone? Yep, uh, military, uh, air force bomb zone and, yeah, gun range. Yes, fuck. Uh, but which, yeah. well, uh, a large portion of that part of America is government owned. Yeah, but the, the empty bit. Yeah, yeah, the empty bit, and the uh, you know some of the national parks. But we we technically yeah. kind of own some of that while it's not sold off yeah. for strip mining yet. But yeah, uh, yeah. So and and this dad, I totally do not believe he would let a woman read the map. No. He, oh no, no. Oh, oh, Bob, like because he's a retired cop. Right, Cleveland and, and cop straight away racism. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He's, he's racism, sexism, everything ism that you can do and add a gun to. That's all, Bob. Yeah, and th- they've all there's got no guns. fucking one. Yeah, everyone's got a gun, and so and he got a gun as a retirement present. <laughs> he's a big fucking gun. Good job, old Bob. That's just oh my god. But I was waiting for him to just go. That's it. I'm gonna turn this car around. And we're all going on. <laughs> Sonny Bono, son-in-law, if you pipe up, oh. I'm going to leave you on the side of the fucking road. Fucking Doug. Doug with his denim booty shorts and porn stash. <laughs> oh, but I, I'm there going, seriously? This was a choice. Doug went, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling sexy today. Uh, I, I'm surprised that old Bob hadn't already put a bullet in him. Because there's no way. That would have been, you're not marrying my daughter. <laughs> you're not marrying D. Wallace. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong you knock her so, up with your so... anchor baby you goddamn hippie oh uh, yes <laughs> anchor baby <laughs> oh that's not a phrase you hear every day um <laughs> oh you do if you read the president of the united states's twitter is that wrong <laughs> it's one of the things it... he'll he, he retweets a lot of QAnon and uh neo-nazis and stuff of course so, he does you know <laughs> of course he does of course he does Yes, let's further the race. And speaking of races, apparently rabbits cause car crashes to the point where you will actually bust the axle on your car. Yeah, with some shitty driving. For although, although Cleveland's pretty oh. straightforward, there's not a lot of hills. If I if I remember correctly, it has, it's been yeah. a while since I've been up there. But I mean, look, it was pretty flat though. Let's be honest. Oh, yeah. I mean that that road was pretty flat. But apparently, all of a sudden, oh fuck, there's a rabbit. Quick, swerve to the point where you're going to go and drop the drop the the seventies wagon and that thing was a monster like and, and split the axle I mean you really got to try hard to split the axle on one of those yeah I th- I think this all was because Bob was <clears throat> going to kill his family and leave them in yeah. the desert He's gonna secretly I think that's what was going to happen. drop him down the mine say he didn't yeah. find anything he's got the harbinger back at the gas station to warn everybody off and he's going to take his gun go to California. Grow out his mustache. Start a start a private eye agency. That that's what it is. It, it's Bob is the fat man, and uh, he's off. That see, that's the story that I would have rather seen. And <laughs> he actually picks up Michael Berryman, and he becomes his side, sidekick. Yeah, he could be his dispatch. He does a good job doing the uh, yeah. impersonation of the dispatch later on when you know. Uh, this movie's so old, but I, it's not too spoilery to say that you know one of the main themes of of the sh- of the movie is taking people of civilization and stripping yes. away every bit piece by piece until it's you know I don't know savagery yeah savagery and it's uh, Wes Craven definitely had this partially being uh, well he you know the Sonny Bean or Shawnee Bean story right mm, yes. And yes, I do. So he took that and then he thought about, you know, this was, uh, what, 77? Yeah. So he was thinking about the rage against American imperialism. Ah, As, post, uh, yeah. post-Vietnam. Yeah, so when, like, Papa Jupe is yelling at the head, at the head of Bob about, mm. you know, you think that you're going to come in here and do whatever, you know, I... I'm gonna watch your. I'm gonna watch your dry seeds fly off in the wind, and you know, I'm gonna eat oh, your ashes. 
yeah, I'm just going, really? Is that a choice? You know, I'll eat pretty much anything, but I draw the line at ashes. Yeah, although, I mean, they will eat some fucked up things in this movie. What, the one guy's eating raw hamburger while drinking milk? Oh, Very unkosher. Yeah. Yeah, well, he, he sort of chewed the milk. Really, yeah. <laughs> it was very, oh, God, very wax weird. cardboard. Yeah, mm, tasty. Now, um, I need to talk about Bobby. I need to talk about Bobby, little blonde Bobby, because little blonde, little blonde Bobby, not to be fused with old Bob, <laughs> little blonde Bobby, um, Junior, maybe or Bobby. Yeah, big but Bob, it, Big Bob would not go by Bobby even in bed. I bet. No, 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 Big Bob. He is definitely Big Bob. <coughs> he's, he's Big Bob, old Bob. Uh, he's, he's he was never a Bobby, um, even as a small child. Even as a small, well, see, he might have been more of a um, King of the Hill Bobby as a small child, maybe. Or Maybe he was Robert. Yeah, probably more of a Robert. Actually, now I think about it. But but getting back to Bobby, um, I just want Bobby to die. I want someone to kill Bobby. Even even when he goes into super tough pop collar, Bobby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is Ohio State shirt. Yes, yes. It's just like, oh, you need to die. You seriously, seriously need to die. They scratched my and- face and killed my dog. Come on, it's dead, it's dead, it's dead, it's dead, I'm just going, oh, fuck, you can't even cry properly. You are an idiot. <laughs> Try that backflip one more time. Bam. Oh, dude. Right in the fucking <laughs> Exactly. <face. laughs> why, why did he not just, like, fucking break an ankle right there and get eaten? Yeah. yeah. That, that would have solved a lot of problems. It, actually, speaking of solving problems, this... This is the 70s. Surely slapping a hysterical woman was still in vogue. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't seem to happen. There's a lot of, like, just shaking and, and screaming, but there was not a just get a hold of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> now, that it's was just, uh, that Brenda? Is that her? Yeah, that Bre- the, the... Oh, Brenda is such a screamer. That's she was. So she oh. haunt her scream haunted the producer uh, who also played Mercury. Uh, uh, he, Mercury, he had nightmares about it. I'm not fucking surprised. It was, it was setting my teeth on edge. It was just <laughs> like someone needs to slap. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not an advocate of violence against other humans in any form, but this is the 70s. And I'm pretty sure they were still slapping people. Um, and she, she needed one. Um, actually, the one thing that probably was the biggest first impression for me out of this whole movie was Papa Jupiter's nose. Oh, yeah. The, I mean, look, I know he got hit in the head with a crowbar, but that just seemed just like, what, what, what's going on there? What, what, what was... You have no antiseptic. The, you just kind of, I don't know. Yeah. Let, rub some dirt in it. Let it just, split like, like a hot dog. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm good at oh. fixing people good. Yeah, I fix. I fix Grandpa Fred. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I want to know why he waited all this time to, to cave in, like, Grandpa Fred's head with a crowbar. Because it, that just sort of seemed something that was going to happen. It was going to happen sooner rather than later. It, later. it was. I don't know. Maybe they needed uh, gas gas or petrol, depending on where you are, uh, to maybe. go into town to get those he- headbands and things that they all like wearing. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, well, you know. I'm pretty sure sewing needles don't just grow on trees. Yeah. You know, you you, you got to get the, you got to have headbands and furs and stitches and, oh, so much stuff. It was so stylish. <laughs> Tell me what you learned and keep it nice. So, I, look, I think the first thing I learned about this movie is I'm pretty sure that Bobby shit his pants in fright when he saw the dead dog. Oh, yeah. There's no like, other it, way about it. No, like he legitimately soiled himself, which is why I think he didn't want to tell anyone what happened because he would have to relive the shame of, uh, of brown trousers. It's why he blew up the camper. Yeah, that's it. Well, you know, you, you got to hide the evidence. Yeah. So I've led to belief. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's he's probably he probably had to go great lengths to to hide his 
finishing yeah. sock from either Ooh. super religious mom or you should be out there picking up cheerleaders, uh, yes. Big Bob. <laughs> Big Bob going, he's making babies. Get them in there. <laughs> Further my line. You guys just started. Nailed. We need more police. <laughs> yeah, we need more police. We need more real men with guns. You got a gun. Mustaches. I got a gun. Yeah, guns for everybody. <laughs> you know, all I, you know, Mrs. Mrs. Big Bob. Um, I, I'm pretty sure she had a bit of a dick finish because there was all the talk about snakes and then maypoles and <laughs> you know. It's just, I, re- I reckon. Uh, I reckon she was. She was all about it, which is, you know, probably explains Big Bob's heart condition, I reckon. <laughs> big Bob with his big gun. Yeah, see? Big Bob had a big gun. That's what it was. Well, maybe he had just a big gun and a small winky. Uh, no one will ever know because Big Bob's dead. Um, that part probably burnt off first. Well, see, now we're going to talk about stuff that burns off a little bit later because I've got a question about that. All right. Now, but speaking of things that are big... I learned that apparently babies can come out sideways, be 20 pounds, and hairy as a hairy monkey. As a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> that's how every, that's how somebody needs to introduce somebody somewhere official. Yep. This is my son. Yeah. Um, he uh, I know he's not much to look. Yeah. He came out sideways, literally 20 pounds and hairy as a monkey. <laughs> Little bastard's got a tail. You want to see it? That's just- <laughs> I'm just there going, that's just a, too, a visual that will never go away. Which never. It, and and it does bring to question what species was perhaps Jupiter's well, mother. Yeah. Well, see, that's exactly, as we did mention earlier, um, Fred was really all about his pig. Mm-hmm. Um, Pigs have hair. Who knows? Yeah. Pigs have, they do, they're really spiky here. Um, uh, I'm not sure if they come out sideways. That's something for you at home to work out. But, <laughs> um, it's, it's worth considering. And, um, the other thing worth considering is, uh, if, if someone's on fire, spraying extinguisher right in their face. Is that really the best way to help them? Because <laughs> I'm there, like watching Doug in his booty shorts, just like spray down old Bob with the extinguisher while he screams in agony, going, "Surely you're just really killing him, aren't you?" Well, yeah, I think that the chemicals in—I don't know what they were like in the '70s, but I think the chemical is. Like the anti-oxygen, because fire yeah, fires like oxygen. So yeah, it's just choke on this, Bob. Threaten okay. me with your well, fucking gonna... guns when I took D. Wallace right. to the prom. Mm. Get a, get a load of that, Bob. <laughs> and you know, I mean, this is the seventies where they thought asbestos was good, right? Uh, so yeah, I don't want to see you Bob. on fire anymore. I know you're gonna die. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And now I can go, no, but I tried to save him. Sure, he suffocated to death Where's his while gun? he was on we fire. to save his gun. Yeah. yeah. Well, now, speaking of, speaking of guns, um, I, I don't know about you, but having sex in the back of a station wagon is not as easy as they make it seem. No. I, I don't know how tall Dee Wallace is, though. Uh, but uh, I think she's fairly tall. She she appeared fairly tall. I mean, look, even in a 70 station wagon that's, you know, like fucking bus size, um, it's just not that easy. Yeah. It's, it, it would have been, you probably would have had more headspace in the in the seat, in the back seat. Yes. Rather than probably. laying in the back. And, and, and again, really, is this the time? Is this the time to be... <laughs> To be doing that shit, and because I reckon, like young Bobby was standing there a lot longer than we saw. I think so. And then you have to think about they were all expecting Big Bob to be showing back up any minute. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe Doug was doing it as a bit of a fuck you to Big Bob. I... Even when you're not here, Big Bob, getting it away, <laughs> making another grandbaby. That's right. That's how important you are to me, Big Bob. Hey, ah, oh, poor Big Bob. Poor now. Crucified on a Joshua tree. Ah, uh, yes. Literally on the Joshua tree. Um, tangentially moving to people that like to get a bit of the fresh stuff. Mars likes his meat fresh. Um, but can you, how much, how much blood can you squeeze out of a canary? I, I, you know, if, if memory serves, oh, no. <laughs> um, I wouldn't think much. I, I think it's, it's probably like the, cannibalistic desert dweller version of i don't know if you had those wax cap candies 
that were ah. like fake wax bottles and yes. inside was just a tiny dose of sugar flavor. <laughs> yeah, just sugar. Yeah, just just flat yeah. out sugar. Sugar was, juice uh, yeah. of various colors. Yeah. That that's kind of how yeah. much I think yeah. was was I inside mean, the bird. And he didn't even eat both birds. No, just one. Very wasteful. Rib rips his head off and then just squeezes it. Yeah. And I'm just going, shit, that's just wasteful. It just not really thinking. I mean, look, you do that to a squirrel, sure. But, you know, not not a bird. Not, now, not a bird. Now, it just didn't seem right. Perhaps for us viewers, it might have held up, held different, uh, come out differently if they only had one fake bird. So that was a one-shot uh, scene. And Wes Craven uh, was a little annoyed that he hid the whole bird in his hand. Ah, Right. Right. So it was uh, more of a faux pas. Now, speaking of faux pas, if you will, uh, apparently there is such a thing as hillbilly rape envy. Um, (laughs) Yeah. It's just like, oh, like Mars and Pluto there just, what was it? Come back when you are a man. Wait till you get to be a man. Yeah, I'm going, oh, no. I mean, look, admittedly, it's screaming Sandra, but, oh, no, just not right. Um, And I did learn that apparently hillbillies don't like delicious product-placed Coke. Yeah. They, they, uh, you go to the fridge, you, you get meat, you get milk, and then you just leave those lovely cans of Coke and A&W root beer in the fridge. And they, I mean, they are aware of the concept of beverage containers because he doesn't rip the top off that milk carton. He does the double fold. Before yes. pouring it down his face. Yeah, oh, he knows how they work. So, you know, I would have thought, mmm, delicious cook. Uh, but apparently not. <laughs> maybe uh, Pepsi maybe. paid Wes Craven money to be part of that product placement scene. Maybe. May- maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe they're on keto or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Gotta watch the, the sugar on that. Yeah, that's right. Um, and this is where we yes. get the ripped up Jaws poster, too. Yes! Yes! That is great. Right there in the background, which has been commented on many, many times. One of the things that wasn't commented on, though, was the fact that Bobby really loves to randomly run into the desert. Yep. Uh, Just not like Doug, who is having that moment of screaming at the angry gods. What do you want? (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) This is just running off into the desert. Just just randomly running off into the fucking desert. And speaking of Doug, when Doug comes back and he's just got, I found a junkyard full of shit. Look at all the crap I bought back, which is all fucking pointless. And then goes on about paying taxes. Okay, what was the point? What was the fucking point of any of that, Doug? You useless turd. <laughs> he knew he had the he had forethought to know that they were going to have to set a booby trap with their dead mother to trap the yes. guy with the with the yes. with the convenient wire. Mm, that's right, yeah. convenient. That that was Chekhov's wire. Yep, Chekhov's that's wire. It was. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's already guns going off everywhere, you don't have to worry. Well, about yeah, that. they're just fucking everyone's guns for everybody. Now, I think probably and we we did touch on this earlier, but the most important thing that I learned from this entire movie: the babies make good eating, <laughs> fat, <laughs> juicy. Fat, juicy. I make a joke and I eat the toes. <laughs> <laughs> we all laugh at you, Mercury. We <laughs> all laugh at you. Mercury. Oh, love it, love it. How would you like to try something a little different? Broadcasting from the Cursed Earth, the Psycho Semantic Ast. Let us face without panic the reality of our time. The fact that atom bombs may someday be dropped on our cities. And let us prepare for survival by understanding the weapon that threatens us. To have a, uh, an ignorant, uh, thin skinned megalomaniac uh, who. Sends off you know, on Twitter at 3 a.m. if somebody angered him. The neo Nazis turning up in Washington, D.C. to have a rally saying, Heil Trump. We talk about politics. I knew I couldn't trust you, corporate greaseballs. We talk about movies. You can't come down here and arrest people just because of what they look like. Are you crazy? But that's police harassment. We talk about political movies. We're in trouble. The whole world's in trouble. They're all around us and we never knew them. You can only see them with these special glasses. 
the Psycho Semantic Cast. Also known as the Psycho Semantic Podcast. I'm sure you've got questions. Ask me anything. <laughs> the first question that I asked about when watching this movie is it just me or are bobby and sandra like creepy and when i say creepy i mean like incest creepy you know the first time i rewatched this like because i decided to sort of have it on in the background again uh but yep. when i watched it for real the first time i had almost forgotten their relationship in a couple points yeah well it it, it gets very gray <laughs> Yeah, the 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 uh, some of the embraces. It's very close, and oh, <laughs> I, I I may be a little biased about the perception of Ohio being from there, but <laughs> they don't even get into that sort of accusations of things until you get to Southern Ohio. Clinton is up north. No, no, yeah, you, you, Cl- Cleveland's yeah, you, you, up near Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, it's in the Great Lakes. Uh, it's it's yeah. You know, there's Lake Erie up there, and then. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty of forests and that's all that matters that's apparently all you need is just forests and everyone's going I'm fucking my sister um <laughs> uh, that, that, that's what I heard anyway I'm, I'm, but it, I'm it, not it, one it to judge it was weird it was it was like uh, maybe Bob oh, I hate casting dispersions on the dead but maybe maybe Big Bob was a secret Nazi and he's trying to make Nazi the babies Master with Rex. his Aryan children oh maybe well that would explain his gun fetish it would it would, yeah. Okay, and, so and his uh, flammability. I heard Nazis Indeed. are highly flammable, but I don't know. Well, anyone at home, feel free to test that out. Um, and now I don't feel even vaguely bad about him dying because he is clearly um, a Nazi. Old Bob is a Nazi, and uh, while we're on the on the on the on the point of Nazis and, and weird incest and master race. Um, I don't know about you, but I've never made dick jokes with my mum like Bobby did. I know. I I was I still have trauma from watching Bram Stoker's Dracula with my mom when I was thirteen. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. There's some scenes in that that will make you feel decidedly uncomfortable, and there's a lot of not making eye contact for quite a while yes. afterwards. Yeah, so I I would not make jokes about Freud and snakes and no. stuff. But, just, yeah, but they're weird again. fucking fam- when they were laughing at the picnic about. Remember that time Beast ate that dog? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. That's right. <laughs> Big Bob had to pay for a dead poodle. Oh, okay, that, what is wrong with you people? That lady was so upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, who's yeah. the real savage? Yes. Yes, who is it? Now, speaking of savages, how do inbred cannibal hillbillies know how army radios work? A lot of trial and error. I, I'm sure that yeah, maybe just, there were more of them buttons. in the family and they s- stopped getting accidental bombings called in on them. Ah, okay. It's, a, the, these, it's literally survival of the fittest. These are the fittest, yes. smartest yes. Um, people named after planets that, that uh, survive. <laughs> Except yeah. for Ruby, and I went. Why is Ruby not like called? I don't know. Because she's the Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure some of the some of the planets are are women. You know, Mars, of course, is the war. Also, the war yes. god. And mm. um, what Pluto's small. I I, I sort mm. of forget uh, the mythology, the transfer from Roman to Greek. But I think Pluto is Hermes. I don't know. As far as I know, Pluto's a yellow dog that doesn't talk in a weird <laughs> racist situation for Disney. Uh, Pluto doesn't go here. Which, again, is just weird and wrong. And I think that's some level of prosperity um, that I think we should talk about. One of the things that we should talk about is, is it possible to steal a whore that no one will miss? I mean, I guess if she's an uh, independent sex worker and she, mm. she doesn't have a pimp, but... Ah, but I, 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 again, how far do you have to go? I mean, they were like right in the desert. Like he would have had to go a fair way to find a hooker and then steal her and have no one miss her. Yeah, I guess I mean, when you say steal, yeah. that does connotate ownership. Yeah, this is what I mean. Or, uh, right? So it's just weird. I mean, I, I just sort of went, you know, if she'd left with him because there was something wrong, I'd go, Okay, you know, everyone makes choices. Uh, but the phrase was, he stole it. He stole it. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Mama Jupiter, she loved a J&B, didn't she? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, she loved her <laughs> Jane B. And well, who can blame her? Um, you know when you oh, when you got to look up at that split nose. Oh, yeah, just grinding away, drooling um, man meat all over your face. Oh, Bob's oh, fingers. Oh, see, uh, yeah, that's right. Just chewing on Bob's fingers. Now, speaking of things that is weird, what do you reckon those hillbillies used for hairspray? Because Ruby, she had it going on. It was hair just like everywhere. <laughs> I I think it was a, a combination of uh, I don't know. I you know I don't know. See, straight away I went. It's I reckon it's a whole lot of something about Mary. Yeah, that 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 was where I was gonna go. Yeah, R- R- yeah, R- that that automatically. Mercury and Pluto probably the most. They they seem to be yeah. the most energetic. Uh, yeah. of the two and yeah. and mercury had so much adornment that he seemed to have a lot yeah, of he had like blue feathers and, around yeah he did, well oof. see that's gonna add, add an interesting funk to your dead animal skins if you're gluing them together like that <laughs> uh, i think beast oof, did everyone a favor shoving him off the mountain yeah I, I think he did now earlier we were talking about big bob on fire and one of the questions I had was, uh, why didn't like Big Bob's mustache burn? Because <laughs> nothing stronger than a Cleveland cop's mustache. <laughs> steel, it's steel wool, just grown out of his face, yeah. the, and he can make it grow on on command. It's just like yep. instant fucking brush. You can take on three hillbillies at once. <laughs> My mustache. <laughs> using it, ripping it off and using it like a weird Cleveland batarang. I don't know. My mustache <laughs> is Steven Seagal's father. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe that's why Chuck Norris has a full goatee. Could be, what it, could be. Could be, could be. Now, speaking of things that I, I really want, I want to know where I can get a bone and bullet necklace like Bluto's. Because um, that was some pretty stylish stuff he had. I mean, that was one of the few adornments other than his raccoon tie. Uh, <laughs> it was just like, yeah, someone's put a bit of thought into that. Yeah, and I'm not sure what kind of tool. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it seemed pretty special. And, uh, you know, the whole family, you know, like we said that Ruby, Ruby is like covered in, in you know, like fucking Sheena of the Jungle type outfit. And, you know, you got Mercury, who was like feathers and everything else. And then again, Pluto, who is just about naked, which is a little creepy. Um, yeah, I don't know. And Mars, how come Mars was the only one with the weird teeth? Did you notice that? He had, like, vampire teeth. Yeah. The, and everyone else just had, like, normal teeth. The, little the jagged teeth. vampire. Maybe nobody else wanted to wear the fake teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe they just went, no, that's like, it. I, I draw the line at <laughs> fake teeth. Like, I, it, well, yes. if Ruby wouldn't have it because she, she's yeah. got to still be pretty. Yeah, pretty in in a non-conventional yeah. Hill, sense. Hills have, she's Hills Have Eyes. Pretty. pretty. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use that as an official measure from now on. Do you think I'm pretty? Yeah, I think your hills have eyes hills pretty. Have eyes. Yeah, you're, you're, you're cannibalistic cave, cave dweller pretty. Yeah, pretty. But, you know. But you can run fast, so you got that. Yeah, ooh, she can run fast. Now, I think the final question that I had is, is knowing that the end of this movie, do you think Bobby and Sandra have inbred children in their future? I think that there's a, a definite possibility. I, which which ending was on yours? There's two endings to the to the movie. Well, although it's uh, largely just one scene played after another, where it's earlier in another version, and then a different credit sequence. Do you? Ha- oh, okay. Do you have the one where uh, they all get together at the end, and then they show their names over their pictures? Or do you have the one where it goes red? N- no, I've got the one where it goes red. That's the regular the the theatrical or whatever regular ending the alternate ending uh, am i getting too nerdy about this no okay. <laughs> um the alternate ending the scene where they blow up the trailer is last yep. instead of uh, uh doug doing the thing last Hmm. But yeah, in that one, that scene is last and then Doug shows up because he's already saved his baby and then Hmm. they all sort of hug each other and the weird sort of hills have eyes, not the twangy hills have or uh, Hmm. last house on the left music, but the sort of flowery symphonic music. Uh, comes on like the and they're they all played just, right at the start yeah yeah and they're all just kind of standing uh, there looking at each other and uh ruby is with doug and he sort of gestures towards her and then they do 
everybody, every actor's name over the family and Ruby. And then the screen goes red and it does everyone else's credits. Ah, okay. Um, so, yeah, Doug's Doug's making hillbilly babies for sure. And, <laughs> yeah, Bo- Bobby and Sandra, they are growing the hillbilly master race. I'm fucking 100% certain. They run the gas station. They, yeah, yeah I think they, yeah, they, they, take they have the pig. <laughs> <laughs> they've got a pig they've got guns they're yeah you know eventually what they're on their way to california i think that takes place in california but not whatever part they were going to so eventually the uh, bay area hears marching goose steps coming from sand to concrete and yes that's not what happens in the hills have eyes part two which i don't think i've ever actually seen I can honestly say I've I've never seen it. Um, I have not seen the flashback from the dog's perspective that everyone talks about. (laughs) That that sounds like someone took one too many drugs. Yeah, Um, (laughs) that's (laughs) yeah. I think Wes like Wes Craven's got a checkered filmography, and that Hills Have Eyes Part Two is one from what I understand. Your time is almost up, so give me your final thoughts. As we get into, obviously, the final thoughts on this movie, um, I think it's worth noting that there's no point crying over dead mama. Because it's just... <laughs> she just, like... Mum just dies. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> um, I mean, look, sure, blankets are not a cure for bullet wounds. Uh, I get that. But, you know, use, and then using her as, as a lure... <laughs> That just seemed really creepy to me. I I I think that this this is a sign that that uh, Bobby and Brenda is that her name Sandra. Sandra is it Sandra? I thought it was Brenda. Oh, yeah, one of those. Bobby and his sister wife are yeah. <laughs> wiping the slates clean and starting new, and they're they're going to put mom over there, and it'll, yeah. it'll throw. I don't know. Well, like she said earlier, when they were joking about nobody ever being able to find them. I, yeah, I, that's exactly it. I think they got together it's and had like, a conversation. And mm, they're just going to go, now we're going to put mom out there. And you know what? Mom could have ended up like grandpa in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> 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 oh, let's see. That's what it is. That's, it's all coming together now. Yeah. It's all coming together. Now, uh, we have a, uh, Brenda, who, D. Wallace. She has to be the worst drooling crier I have ever seen. And, and it was like full on drool too. It was just, yeah. just, and I'm going, that's just going too far. It's just, <laughs> I mean, look, unless Doug likes it like that, I don't know, but it just, oh, it's just like, yeah, you're not happy. He puts, he puts it in his mustache. Oh, oh, it's just, oh, his weird porn stash. Yeah. Rubs it on his booty yeah. shorts. His, his, his um, hair saver. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Have you ever have you have you ever nursed a pig in a blanket? I'm pretty sure that there is a decided difference between a pig and a baby in a blanket. I think that yeah, and especially they claim to have previous experience mm. of baby abduction. Yes. Which where's yes. that movie also? Mm. I mean who's Babies. I, I mean, is it their brother or sister that, that came out sideways and backwards? Sideways. Always backwards. Here is a monkey, but juicy as bacon. Um, baby. I yeah. <laughs> I I I would have to think that ha- still having never held a pig, but having seen a pig in real life, mm. they have to move different than a baby. And I think the yeah, the weight the weight would be so yeah. off. Look. I, I, I'm not one to, to bring up the past, but um, I can tell you for free, pigs don't like being put on their back. Um, yeah, I would imagine they'd make more noise and a different kind of noise. Yes, yes an unhappy noise. A very unhappy noise. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It just didn't seem right. And that, that baby, like, they're out in the desert and that baby is in, like, winter clothes. <laughs> that kid must have been sweating bullets. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's just uh, like, poor kid. And then the mm. salting, basting itself for the cannibals. Oh, make it an extra tasty. Mm, tasty. Cook it up with some French fried potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I watched Sling Blade just recently. It's stuck in my mind. <laughs> the Sling Blades have eyes. That's a movie that I'd watch. Um, speaking of things that I would watch, I would watch more of Sandra and Bobby making Sandra. Yeah, Sandra and Bobby making um, traps that are worthy of the Roadrunner. Oh yeah, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, you're, you're using Chekhov's wire. And yes, we're using Chekhov's wire from earlier. You, you see the Wes Craven was already reading that field manual that he gave to uh, Nancy in Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. It's like building booby traps. Yeah. And, and, and just you wind it around the wheel and you drag it along. It just, <laughs> despite the fact that they're using the rear wheels on the wagon, it's got a snapped axle. So the... This is showing the depth of my my automotive knowledge. Fairly sure the diff won't actually spin the wheels <laughs> if the axles. <laughs> I could be wrong, that, but I'm fairly sure. That would have been a funnier scene where he's they she's all celebrating on the roof already, and Bobby's just in there <laughs> slamming on the gas, and nothing's Whee! happening, and gradually yeah. Jupiter just runs up and. <laughs> just trots over and stabs him in the head with 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 uh, whatever he shoved in old Bob's mouth when he was crucifying. Because I couldn't work out what that was. Yeah, I don't know. Was, I, mean, I know one of the weapons was, was half a sheep shear or something like that. But I think that was I saw that, Mars's but, weapon. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, like Papa Jupiter like shoves something like conical in a, in old Bob's mouth when he's crucifying. I'm just going. Part of me wanted to know what it was, and there was a big part of me that just didn't. Yeah, some some things are best left in the desert. But, yes. And finally, I think the only thing that was best left in the desert was the fact that it took 85 minutes for there to be one of the much-talked-about and lauded rattlesnakes in this movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and used, and, and used r- perfectly. Ruby using it as a... Yeah, used, that's grabbing it, holding with the stick, and then stabbing Mars in the back of the head. With the rattlesnake's fangs. I'm just thinking, oh, that's fantastic. Killing her brother for a better life. With Well, uh, is it a better life with Doug? Really? I mean, it's probably an upgrade from living with those weird people in a cave eating Ooh, eating babies. Maybe. maybe there's less baby eating with Doug. Maybe, maybe yeah, that's uh, a sticking point for her. Yeah, maybe. Maybe or, you know, she's on a baby-free diet or something. Yeah, she's... <laughs> you know vegetarianism was starting to catch on in the 70s yeah well she'd eaten a lot of cactus Well, look, um, that wasn't the road trip movie I expected, but nonetheless, it was great to chat to you, mate. Thank you so much for magically appearing in here. Um, as per usual, I have no idea how you got here or what's going to happen when you leave. But uh, if you're going back to 2020, uh, I wish you the absolute best of luck <laughs> with uh, yeah, yeah. what's going on over there. It's 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 an interesting year. It is. It is. Oh. I mean, you know what happens. Uh, I I do, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, but poof, it's fun. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we we no spoiler warning on 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 that, but yeah, I mean, I- at least I am not frozen, and at least I have no Nazi doppelganger twin. No, that is true. Uh, so, that is true. You you've had some interesting visits to the bunker. There's no two ways about that. Yeah. So and. Yeah. This time, yeah, just I got to have a good conversation with you about a movie that I definitely liked a lot more when I was younger, but I still dig. Yeah. Oh, it's it's definitely a cool movie. Um, and I think it just says a lot about inbreeding and pigs and uh, the Nazi master race. Yeah, uh, you know, Bob. Bob was a Nazi. Hashtag twenty twenty Nazi. Bo- <laughs> twenty twenty Nazi Bob. Nazi Bob. You have been listening to Witch versus the Doomsday Clock. A proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Come join the rest of the Meat Popsicles in our Facebook group. 
facebook.com slash groups slash witch versus the doomsday clock.